video let's take a look at testing the electronic inside the Nissan Frontier four-speed automatic transmission this transmission is from the 2000 to 2004 year model here we will notice the lockup solenoid that's connected to the overdrive switch on the shifter solenoid and that could be tested on this blue wire right next to where its connection is there is a oil temperature sensor which should not exceed 175 degrees Fahrenheit on this side of the transmission we have four wires which are going to need testing to ground these wires are relating to A and B shift solenoid forward clutch solenoid and line pressure hydraulic line pressure solenoid this will require removal of the valve body in the video description you will see a video link on how to remove the valve body without separating its two half it is critical that the essential bolts be removed for detaching the valve body removal of all the bolts from the valve body will cause the valve body to separate in two causing the loss of internal critical parts. In the event the automatic transmission should fail, it is always best to remove the oil sump and the valve body to investigate the internal of the transmission and identifying the cause, which sometime could be a clogged hydraulic passage, failed solenoid, failed clutches, or piston seals conducting a test on the oil temperature sensor would be the first part of the procedure since the wire does not have a connection inside the transmission and is only on the exterior on the harness plug you will notice that black and white wire on the two center pin which is required testing at ambient air temperature and also at transmission operation temperature so what we want to see from this temperature sensor is 2.5 ohms at 68 degree Fahrenheit or 0 0.3 ohms at 175 degree Fahrenheit so let's go and take tests on our sensor which is currently approximately 80 degrees in Fahrenheit. As we can see, the meter is displaying a 1.56 ohms. This is within factory specification for approximately 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's continue by removing the valve body. In the video description, there is a instruction on the necessary bolts that are required for doing so. Do not want to remove the non-necessary bolts. This could lead you to problem and separation of the valve body. Let's take a close look at all the bolts, length, and size that are required to hold the transmission valve body to the transmission case housing. So there you'll notice that bracket that holds the hydraulic tube down on top of the transmission valve body. This is a very important step and procedure. Failure to identify the nuts and bolts will cause them to strip the threads from the aluminum casting. So here you notice this is the bolt that holds the temperature sensor and this bolt also holds this this one here holds this 
spacer that is fixed to the valve body and then it's seated into the spring. Same thing for this one here. That's the spacer right here. So this has to be torqued to the valve body. The only reason these two bolts need to get removed is to relieve this hydraulic line retainer clamp. So that is all the bolts. Those are the length. Make sure you memorize them. Have this video to look at. Now in here you could look at the clutch and steel liner and you will be able to see in there if the clutches are good, but you're not going to be able to see all of them, but it's sort of a good way of investigation. You're not going to be able to see anything up in here. So this is the forward drum and that's where you're going to be able to make your estimation from. On these solenoids that we have here, now when we take a look at it, we could see this first one here will be the overrun clutch solenoid and this one here will be the shift solenoid A, this is shift solenoid B, and this is the line pressure solenoid. So this is a little loose in here so it has to be investigated as to why. And we have to do a continuity test on the red and blue wire for a ohms resistance to make sure that all these solenoids and the pressure sensor meets the factory Nissan OEM recommendations. So you can see we have a black wire in here and that black wire goes to this last solenoid. Then we have a blue, a white, and that's for the A and B. That's the pressure solenoid. So let's go ahead and take our ohms resistance test on these solenoids. And we can see we are 26.1. Factory calls for 20.0 or 40.0. So this solenoid is good. And we can see all of them will most likely between be within factory specification. And this is 26.1. It's the same thing, and that's shift solenoid A, and that's 26.3. That's all within factory specification. Our next would be this pressure control solenoid, and we want to test on the red with the blue. And what we're looking for here is within the factory specification. With the solenoid harness retained back in its location, we now want to take a ohms resistance test on the lockup solenoid. And this we could see we have a 14.4, and this is also within factory recommendation. So this is what you will want to do before you remove the valve body from the transmission case. You want to make sure you test the solenoid and they are in functioning condition, which is within factory recommendation for the ohms resistance test. You do not want to separate the valve body two halves from each other at this point. In the event it should need to do so, you will know this once the transmission has been rebuilt in the rotating assembly with its seals, clutch, and steel liner. Removal of the shift solenoid, careful attention must be taken. Want to prevent damage to these O-ring rubber seal that has to be inserted in these orifices. Same thing goes for the pressure control solenoid, which is mounted in a bushing with a washer and holds it in position. Now I would assume this bushing is there so on this side is to absorb any vibration or shock from the hydraulic pressure when it's to shift on and off. Another thing that you also need to pay careful attention to is contaminant 
on the surface of the device. So you see when you move your fingers like that, you can see we have a large amount of Mallory on the surface of the sensor. Now that this sensor is tested to be within factory specification and good working order, it should be clean with soap and water. You do not want to use gasoline or any kind of petroleum solvent. You could also use new transmission oil with a brush, preferably instead of soap and water. You just wash it in new transmission oil with a brush and that will take care of it. Now let's take a look at installing the solenoid. It's going to be important when you're removing it to use the flat end of the screwdriver and pry between this plate and the body of the valve body. You don't want to damage the valve body by placing a gouge in it and you don't want to pull this up because you could bend this plate and when it's time for installing it the o-ring will not seat properly in the orifice and this will call a, cause a leak in the hydraulic pressure when the solenoid is function or not in function and it will affect transmission performance. Same thing for this one. It will also be best to conduct this continuity test when the device are in the transmission in the vehicle. Reason being you could conduct two tests. One when the parts are in cold temperature that will be ambient air temperature or outside air temperature and another test could be when the transmission is hot, when the oil is hot. This will most likely give you a different reading since these sensor device actuators are a coil pack and magnet for function. The coil sometimes will become weak when the temperature increase the transmission operation temperature of 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Should the temperature exceed beyond that, it will cause damage to the transmission clutch and rubber seal. Another thing that you need to know about these solenoid is that these actuators, they can be removed by releasing these C-clip and they will be able to disconnect from this retainer plate. Always when assembling transmission parts you want to make sure you're using new transmission fluid for lubricating the oil seal and the surface where it's going to be installed. So placing this solenoid pack with the forward solenoid, clutch solenoid, A and B, we'll have to place it into this cut right here and we want to make sure we get it square when we're inserting it so it drops like that. Now we have three 10 millimeter fasteners, two are bolts, and as you see one is a nut. These fasteners will be torqued to factory specification on the pressure control solenoid. We want to make sure we have our rubber mount and its retainer. So you can see on the bottom of this one you have a steel retainer and the top. On the top of this one you have one and on the bottom you also have one. It's just it's down on the shaft. You want to make sure you fit it in the rubber mount and then place the solenoid in location. So this is going to require you stretching of this wire and that's why you're going to have to disconnect the harness from its retainer. You have to also be careful make sure this wire don't become chafered by the end of this metal bracket. It will most likely cause a short when it's to be assembled. The fastener for the pressure control solenoid is a 10 millimeter nut and we have this bolt with this retainer bracket. So it will go something like this. The brackets it's like this down here. This is all for holding that solenoid in position when hydraulic pressure is being applied and not applied. So we want to make sure we place our ground cable between the bracket and the bolt. 
and this will all be torqued to the specification. And we want to make sure the harness is secure and properly fitted in its location so when it's to be installed onto the vehicle, it would not fall out of position and it's to be plugged in. Let's go over the codes that are associated with these actuators. This first actuator is the overrun clutch solenoid and this will detect a DTC code P1760, P1760. Then we have this A and B solenoid. And these two solenoids will most likely trigger a DTC code P0755, P0731, P0733, P0734, and P0750 on the pressure control solenoid. This will detect a DC, DTC code of P0745 or 744. On the lockup solenoid, that's this one here, this will detect a DTC code P0740 or a DTC code P0744. This here, pressure control solenoid, you have to be careful with this here. You have to make sure you don't bend it and break it. This is the part that connects to the shifter. So most of the time when you're driving your vehicle and the vehicle is in, in D, you will feel a vibration on the vehicle when you stop at the light and the vehicle is in D and you will most likely want to shift it into neutral, placing this into the neutral position. Well, doing that many times back and forth will cause this plunger to wear inside of the valve body, and this will create a clearance for transmission fluid and pressure to be lost, and it will also affect the transmission performance when shifting. So you let's talk about this control mechanism, pressure, solenoid, line pressure solenoid. It communicates through the transmission control module, has the various line pressure control characteristic to meet the driving condition. A on-off duty signal is sent to the line pressure solenoid valve, that's this, based on TCM characteristic hydraulic pressure on the clutch and brake is electronically controlled through the line pressure in smooth shift operation. Normal condition, the line pressure, the throttle opening characteristic is set for suitable clutch operation. And the A, I should say the A and the B shift solenoid communicates through the transmission control module, which is separate from the ECU, activates shift solenoid A and B according to signal from the throttle position sensor and the revolution sensor to select the optimum gear position on the basis of the shift schedule memorized in the transmission control module that's in the computer. The shift solenoid valve perform simple on-off operation. That's turning the hydraulic pressure on and off, allowing it to flow and not to flow. When set to on, the drain circuit closed and pilot pressure is applied to the shift valve. We also have a few other codes that are associated with the transmission, and that's DTC code P0710. That's the automatic transmission temperature sensor. We've discussed that before. 
Then we also have DTCP0720, that's vehicle speed sensor. And for your automatic transmission, that should be within a 500 to 650 ohms. You also have a DTC code P0725, which is engine speed signal, that's the RPM. And those are the codes that are associated with this transmission that you will most likely see during the lifetime. Should the valve body be separated to replace its gasket and check for leakage, you will notice that there are a set of 11 balls that need to be placed into their location. And there is a set of dowel pin for the upper and lower half of the valve body which is critical to installation.